breakfast today? Probably because you're naked. I'm naked? You're naked. I'm naked? As a jaybird. <gasps> it's okay. You're just having a stress dream about work. This is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. You feeling kind of trapped in the wrong job? I am. That's true. I know. I know. But there's help. You hear it every day on the radio. I do? BismarckMandanHelpWanted.com. Oh, right. With hundreds of local jobs to choose from. Medical, restaurant, IT, accounting, drivers, drivers retail. retail. You search by keyword and categories. You can find the perfect job for you. I can? And you can post your resume in minutes for free. Who are you? You're subconscious. You look like Mrs. Sharubadubi in accounting. You know, I get that a lot. So I'm not standing naked at the office? Oh, you are standing naked. What? But you're in your front yard. Oh, but I'm dreaming still. No. Huh? Say hi to the Wilsons next door. Hi! BismarckMandanHelpWanted.com Can I borrow a bathrobe? Long name, amazing result. Hi, this is Mandy Schaff, volunteer coordinator at the Central Dakota Humane Society. CDHS would like to say thank you to the Bismarck Mandan Young Professionals Network for selecting us as their charity of the year. The YPN has helped raise thousands of dollars, provided dozens of volunteer hours, and brought more awareness to our organization. Thank you for helping us house, rehabilitate, and relocate stray animals. The Bismarck Mandan Young Professionals Network. Career-minded, community-focused. Find out more at ypnetwork.org. With cloudy conditions, along with a few showers around the area into the day today, we'll see temperatures topping off up in the mid-60s for highs. Northwest winds will also stay from around 10 to 20 miles per hour. For tonight, with partly cloudy skies, we'll fall off to 48 with a northwest wind of 5 to 10. Then we're looking at some sunshine on your Tuesday with a high up in the mid-70s with southeast winds 5 to 10. From the Weather Weather Center, powered by weatherology.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Trombley on Super Talk 1270. Right now it's 54. Our own radio station, not Fargo, not the Twin Cities, proud to be Bismarck and Mandan Zone, Super Talk 1270. Welcome to the Tech Ranch, live and local here on Super Talk 1270. The latest gadgets, online security, websites and apps, social media, and so much more. How can technology help you? Let's find out. It's time for the Tech Ranch on Super Talk 1270. From our studios in beautiful Mandan, North Dakota, along the mighty Missouri River, here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. Roads that are solar panels, cars with no steering wheels, Mm. money that has no coins or paper currency, and 3D printers that print themselves. Yes, it sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but in fact, they are going to be part of our everyday lives very soon. Guests today include author and SEO specialist Jana Hoiberg, CEO of Mason eyewear.com michael kleinman and ken sanders from the volt report will be joining us later in the show at the control panel producer extraordinaire jim walsh hello jim, how's it going i'm not too shabby it's feeling kind of monday-ish it is kind of monday-ish yeah. and and uh i'm just looking at nationaldaycalendar.com yeah. and today is national leave the office early day uh, it works for me yeah i'm thinking so with this kind of monday thing going on mm-hmm. kind of drizzly outside okay well you have a good day here. yeah we'll see you. <laughs> you know one of these days i'll have to figure out how to run that control panel thing over there yeah you i know. wouldn't have to come in at all yeah, well, no, Not that no. I don't like coming in. No, you'd have to come in because yeah. you're an integral part of this show, but it would be fun to know. You know, yeah. I look at those things. I remember when uh, Make Logan... Make sure the geezer shows up. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Logan, my grandson, that one day when he was in here, sure. you know, a few weeks ago, he, all he wanted to do after I talked to him was he wanted to come up here and push those dials. Yeah. <laughs> well, my favorite thing funny. to do with the kids when they come in is uh, they, they touch a button. I go, God, don't touch that! <laughs> That launches the missiles. <laughs> I bet they come in. Do you, do, you, do you give tours here to schools? Once in a while. Yeah. Sure. I bet they get a kick out of that, actually. By the way, if anybody's interested in the tour, call the main office. There you go. Yeah, yeah we'll do get not, you in here. That's right. Sure. That'd be very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, a lot of news over the week. Um, Google, did you see the car? Do tell. This is a car. It looks like a little bug. You know, a little Volkswagen bug, <laughs> yeah, I guess. It looks yeah. like a bug. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no accelerator, accelerator pedal. There's no steering wheel. You literally get in this car and say, Jim. I, or, I mean, I guess you could call your car Jim if you want to, yeah. but I would imagine you have to Hi, call your Jim. Yeah. <laughs> but it will. Hello, you, Jim. You will actually uh, tell your car where you want to go. So if you want to go out for coffee or what have you, it will drive you there. Oh. And it's also an electric car. 
uh, goes up to 100 miles uh, between charges. So yeah. very, very interesting. They're only There's one out as a prototype right now. They're going to make 100 of these as prototypes, and I would imagine they're going to be based in the California, L.A. area, and a person will be able to. I, I'm not really sure if anybody outside of Google will be able to have one of these, but it would be interesting to see and, and to play around with a little bit. But, in the foreseeable future, probably not. Yes, in the foreseeable future. But it is interesting that we are making the move towards autonomous vehicles slowly but surely. It is happening. Yes. yes. And how would you feel about getting behind or getting in a car with no control over at all? Well, it wouldn't bother me not having to drive. I okay. could sit back and do whatever I wanted. Take a nap. Yep. Uh, read. And that's basically what this is about. You know, a person literally just gets in and tells the car where, where to go, and you don't have to worry about it after that point. So I just I, I do think a lot of people will have issues without at least having some way to take control of the vehicle. And the fact that it doesn't have a steering wheel, I think, will really set people back a little bit yeah. about adapting. Because there's always that thing about, you know, what happens if. Well, you'll be sitting there going, i got to watch the road in case something happens. But there's nothing you can do. There's course. nothing you can do. Yeah. Absolutely nothing you can do. Nothing you have to do. Yep. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how people adapt to the technology. Sure. That That is for sure. Uh, the other thing that I found interesting in the news is that we now have a 3D printer, which, of course, we talk a lot about on this show, um, a 3D printer that you buy the first one, and it replicates itself. <laughs> <laughs> so you buy one, and you buy the filament that goes with it, and it will, it will produce more 3D printers. Wow. So that is kind of interesting, and it does lend you... To think about machines making machines, and wasn't that a Terminator movie or something? That was something like, something that, like yeah. that, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see as well that that technology is coming coming about. The the name of the company or the name of the device is called the Rep Wrap R A P R A P, and it's the first open source uh, organization to produce a low cost three D printer, and it's also one of the first ones that basically replicates additional machines. So, and the other issue that's coming out with 3D printing now, Jim, is who owns the thing that you print? So, if somebody puts, you know, the design of something up on the internet and you take it and you print it, is it yours or somebody else's? It's no different than basically you not having the rights to maybe sell music. Yeah. Or software, or any of these other things, you can use these things. But are you, you know, and this, this I believe is actually going to go all the way to the Supreme Court before this gets settled. When I was a kid, I remember when I was just starting to learn guitar and piano yep. in junior high school. I used to uh, get the music books out of the library and print off sheet music, okay, or Beatles songs or whatever. Sure. You always had to do it when the librarian wasn't looking because she wouldn't let you do that. That's illegal. <laughs> Why would he talk about? And that's exact. This is pretty much what we're talking about. Really, here. Hmm. The ability, you know, because you know you're making copies of stuff that basically aren't yours. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have the right? I mean, when you buy a and everybody Design. does it. It doesn't make it right, but everybody See, does it. See, and that's the thing. I mean, yeah. you know, you can go right back to, like, Napster when, when yeah. the music became, you know, where people were file sharing like crazy back in the days. Yeah. Of course, it still goes on, but it's not as prevalent anymore because I think a lot of viruses and stuff got picked up through that. And people have learned that you will probably – it's not worth the hassle to go through that anymore, especially when you can buy a song for yeah. 80 or 90 cents now. You know, why, why mess around with that so much? But people still do it. But I know that uh, people are certainly going to want to, you know, hop in and download designs of things and print them. You know, whether it's a and I'm just using this as an example. But you know, you you own a car and you break something on the inside that's maybe a piece of plastic. Yeah. You know, you might be able to hop online and get the design for this and print it out and put it in. You know, put it back on your car. That would have been nice when I had my Chevy Nova back in the seventies. And the thing was all a little more chintzy plastic <laughs> to break off in your... <laughs> well, and of course, there's metal printers now and all this other stuff that's coming out, too. I'll never forget the night I was trying to roll down the window and the handle came off of my hand. <laughs> Literally Ooh. came off your hand, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would have been a challenge when it was raining and windy outside all bit. Tell me about it. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, that's that's the things that I think are going to be challenging with 3D printers is is people are going to be you know pulling this stuff down you know downloading it, sharing these files, and they don't have the right to be you know producing these type of things. Uh, and probably maybe for your own use it's okay, but if you start producing things that people created uh, via yeah. a CAD program or whatever to print on a 3D printer, and then you start selling these widgets. Yeah, I was going to say if you're a high profile target. Like Napster was right. They were out there. They were big, and uh, that made them easy to go after. Sure, to go sure. After. And they did. And they actually went after some of the people that were using it as well. Yeah, I don't know if you remember make an example of them. Yeah. I don't think it ever came to anything. Well, there was some. I think there was even one in Fargo, North Dakota. If I remember, a college really? student over there that had you know tens of thousands of dollars of fine levy to come through. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, after the break, everybody, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. Uh, with Michael Kleinman. So I believe come... Mr. Kleinman is on the phone. All right, that'll be Thanks exciting to man. talk to him. It's a very, very popular topic on the show, and I'm very interested to hear what he has to say. So come on back, everybody. Hang in there. Log on now at supertalk1270.com and join the VIP club. Get points every time you log on. Use those points to win prizes from local merchants or online like the Bose SoundLink Bluetooth speaker. Just go to the website, click the VIP tab, and join now. Log on, get points, and win prizes from the home of accurate news, stimulating talk, and the Bismarck Bobcats, supertalk1270 and supertalk1270.com. 60-second insights from Winfield. Your crop's nutrition isn't much different from your own. Establish healthy eating habits when you're young, and it's a lot easier to be healthy as an adult. It's the same thing with your crops and Winfield's Ascend plant growth regulator. See, Ascend strengthens your crops from the beginning so they can germinate earlier and produce a robust root system. This helps your plants grow larger leaves and wider stems and gives you a significant jump on the growing season. If you're looking for complete crop health, Winfield makes the perfect partner. With our NutriSolutions 360-degree approach to plant nutrition, we get down to the cellular level to see exactly what your plants are missing so we can offer custom-tailored solutions for your operation all season long. My name is Teresa Beyer, Plant Nutrition Specialist for Winfield, and I'm here to help get more from your fields and more in your green bins. Nourish your crops from the ground up. Ask your local seller today about Winfield's Ascend Plant Growth Regulator. What an outrage. You've been lied to. Being overweight is not about overeating, not exercising, or a lack of self-control. It's not you. It's your hormones. Most of what you've been told is... Hi, Dr. Stephen Siskin here. If you've all but given up on reaching your ideal weight and want the truth about why you're not burning fat no matter what you do, you need to see the cutting-edge fat loss answer I'm about to share in this free presentation. Go to 55skinny.com. This special website at 55skinny.com was created to explain the four barriers to burning fat. Let Dr. Siskin show you how to smash through these walls and lose stubborn fat. This free presentation at 55skinny.com reveals a proven formula to increase fat burning, decrease your hunger, burn Earn more carbs as energy and reduce stress levels. These breakthrough tools are natural, safe, and drug-free. Plus, you can start using them right now. Go to 55skinny.com to view this eye-opening free presentation. No more lies. Go to 55skinny.com. 55skinny.com. Lots of clouds this afternoon. Areas of light rain. High in the mid-60s. Tonight, partly cloudy, low of 47. I have 74 on Tuesday. Lots of sunshine Tuesday night. Clear to partly cloudy, low of 52. I have 76 on Wednesday. Lots of clouds, areas of showers and storms. Wednesday night, more showers and storms. Alone near 54. I have 75 Thursday chance of thunderstorms. I'm meteorologist Laura Lockwood on Super Talk 1270. Right now, it's 55. Your news leader, weeknights at 6 and 10. Super Talk 1270. Follow the Guru of Geek at Facebook.com backslash the Tech Ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the Tech Ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Anderson. And we want to thank all of our listeners across the country and around the world to join us on the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Also on the Blueberry Network. We enjoy having our listeners there as well. We're also now on TuneIn, which I know Jim is excited about. 
And, of course, we have our own app that anybody can follow us on at Radio Pup. So all kinds of places that you can join us every week here at the Tech Ranch. On the phone is the CEO of MasonEyewear.com, Michael Kleinman. Michael, how you doing? I'm great. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine as well. We're kind of excited to have you on the show now, we're saying kind of because we kind of have the Monday blues going on here. Otherwise, we'd be very excited for us to be here. But anyway, um, you have a wonderful company called MasonEyewear.com, uh, and you also are a Bitcoin enthusiast. And I'm, I'm excited to have you on to talk a little bit about that because uh, Bitcoin is a popular subject here at the Tech Ranch. But uh, let's get into Mason Eyewear first. Tell us a little bit about the founding of the company and what makes your website and your company a little bit different from others. Uh, well, we started Mason and I were actually uh, just in the beginning of this year in 2014. Um, and essentially, to kind of combat um, the monopolized industry of eyewear right now in general, um, Luxottica owns about 80% of the market share and uh, essentially, um, essentially high labels all the names from Tiffany's to Gucci and also owns the stores in which they sell them in, um, such as Sunglass Hut and other popular retailers around the world. Um, we wanted to create an online website that kind of steered away from that, and Dr. Chrysey, myself, and a partner of ours uh, out in California, James Chambers, got together um, and decided that we were going to kind of create an idea that would you know, sell eyewear online at an affordable price, starting at $95 only. And we wanted to also facilitate the use of Bitcoin when they check out because we, we believe that Visa and MasterCard, um, you know, is a big bank, you know, per se, because um, I have experience in processing as well. Um, and we, we feel as if Visa and MasterCard is almost exotic of the, of the industry, and we wanted to mold those two together to create something that was really technological and, and could be advancing, uh, you know, in the future, which we all know Bitcoin will be the future of the Internet. And it's like email was to email and, you know, the Internet was to eat the Internet. So let's, um, you know, we'll we'll kind of meld the two together here, Michael, as far as Mason Eyewear and Bitcoin. Um, can you explain, maybe, maybe we have quite a few people that probably have no clue that are listening to us right now what Bitcoin is. So explain that real quick. Yeah, um, I'd love to. I'll give you just like a basic definition of it. Um, it's really hard to kind of describe it. A lot of people um, have an issue with it, but it's essentially uh, distributed worldwide, you know, decentralized digital money. Um, unlike traditional currencies, you know, such as the dollar, uh, bitcoins are issued and managed without any uh, central authority whatsoever. So there's no government, company, or bank in charge of bitcoin. Um, it's not, you know, therefore it's resistant to inflation and corrupt banks. Uh, with bitcoin, you can basically be your own bank, transact money, um, you know, pretty much anywhere globally, and avoid the middle main uh, banks that you know, take your fees out of, you know, left and right. It's so, it's so, it's so kind of like old school if you think about it, um, you know, the way we transact money globally. So if you are, so with, with MasonEyewear.com, you are now accepting Bitcoin to buy gla- eyeglasses, correct? Yes, we're, we're, we're trying to create a practical item that people use every day. Um, it's a billion-dollar market. And we thought, you know, we could expose Bitcoin by um, attracting you know, people that use glasses every day, um, you know, to, just to make it more aware. Um, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, and we're just a small piece of that puzzle. Uh, but we feel like, you know, we're doing our part by at least exposing it in something that most, you know, most people have need visual correction, and um, we think that, you know, they might come across our site and, you know, become more aware of it. Essentially, another aspect is, baby boomers and, and needed glasses. We want to make, you know, that age group aware of this currency uh, because, you know, that's what their kids are going to be using in the future. So, you know, what, one of the things that come up all the time, of course, is security, you know, and a lot of people with good reason have a problem using credit cards online and maybe not so much because the, you know, website that you're working with has some issues, although that has happened occasionally as well. But, you know, if you got a virus on your machine, you got a key logger going on or something along those lines, you know, there are sure. so many ways that a person can lose, um, you know, the, the credit card number or whatever you have because that's what they're trying to extract is that information, what that credit card number is, what your – Exactly. Your, uh, exactly. And, just, and creating that fraud, you know. Exactly. Uh, so, so – And bi- essentially yeah. – go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, essentially, I mean, with Bitcoin, I mean, 
that's the greatest thing about it. I just want to give you a little bit of background on me. Um, I've been in payments for seven years, and I'm still in payments with Visa and MasterCard. I don't yeah. work directly for them, but I work with a big international company, which I'd rather not just say the name of, um, that is essentially, uh, you know, we, we facilitate these transactions daily. Right. You're, 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 over you're, you're, you're a merchant, merchant uh, uh, processor, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Sort of, uh, a large processor. Okay. So I know that angle and that side of it for seven years. Um, and I know how much fraud is out there. Uh, that's why we have PCI compliance and things like that. With Bitcoin, I mean, there's so many advantages to the currency itself, um, you know, namely being able to not have a chargeback at all. So, you know, if somebody buys something, they can't just say they didn't get it or receive it. There's a public ledger of this transaction, if you will. Um, and Another thing is the transparency in it. Um, you know, Dish Network just recently accept, you know, said they're going to accept Bitcoin. Um, there's, you know, the, we just have to accommodate, you know, these online businesses just need to accommodate, and businesses in general, the demand that people understand Bitcoin's value. And, uh, you know, these lobbyists of Visa and MasterCard really need to just tone it down in terms of, you know, trying to, you know, steer us away from it with the Mt. Gox thing and, and just try to make, you know, it more noticeable in the market. I don't, you know, that's pretty much what our aim and mission is. Well, of course, they're steering away from it simply because it has a, a, a direct impact on the income that they produce, uh, charging, yes. quite frankly, very outrageous, uh, you know, credit card transaction fees, uh, you know. And, and I don't think the general public, if you're not a business owner, a lot of people don't realize – what it costs the business to run a transaction, but it's usually in that three percent range after everything is said and done. You know, Absolutely. you know they might they might get you in saying that it's you know one point six percent for this, and then but of course you got credit card swiping fees, and you have different uh, if it's a debit card compared to a charge card, there's different fees, and and it's very very difficult as a business owner to even understand the statement when it comes in. I mean, I, I have no idea how you even balance your books against a, uh, a merchant account statement because it's worse than your cell phone bill. Yeah, I, and I, you know what? Every time I see one, I learn something new every day. So you know, there's tips and tricks that those processors use. Um, you know, not ours. I'm not going to say ours. We're, we're the most transparent out there. But there are processors out there, uh, you know, daily that are just raising rates and doing things like this behind merchants' back. That they really need to be aware and, and, and understand that this isn't, they don't have to accept this and that there's other methods of payments out there that are much more secure, much more, you know. My, my funniest thing is, like, why would you get, you know, if you have a $10,000 credit card um, and you give it, and you let's just say you just got it today and you go ahead and, and you go to a gas station and you give it to somebody to swipe for a pack of gum that costs a dollar, there's $9,900 on there that can be stolen. Right. And yeah. Bitcoin avoids this at all costs. And if it does get stolen, it's traceable. Unlike the credit card fraud we see now where the banks just eat the fees and basically we just pay them in overdraft charges and other different fees that they assess to us. Anyway. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And for those who are just joining in, uh, we're talking to Michael Kleinman. He is the CEO of MasonEyewear.com and a Bitcoin, Bitcoin excuse me, <laughs> enthusiast. And uh, so how does a person get Bitcoins? I mean, can you, can you go online and just buy them or can you earn them? How does that work? So there's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you about two different ways you can get them. If you live in the United States, it's very, uh, you know, it's very easy. You can go to Coinbase.com, uh, which is a wallet for Bitcoin, essentially. I wouldn't recommend storing your Bitcoin in there, but it is a wallet for Bitcoin in which you can buy at the rate in which Bitcoin is selling at. Um, right now, that's somewhere in 630. Don't quote me on it, but um, it goes up and down by 40 to $50 maybe, you know. By the time you blink your sure. eyes, and, and you could buy a fraction um, of a bitcoin. I mean, you don't have to buy six hundred and thirty dollars yeah, to have one a bitcoin. Yeah, it's called the MBTC, which is a thousandth of a bitcoin. You can buy as many as you know. You can buy as little as many as you want. I think the future will be we're just tra we're just transferring MBTC, which is a thousandth of a bitcoin. Okay. Um, you know, uh, so, but there's also you know a certain supply and 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 the limitation to how much bitcoin is, you know, um, you know in circulation, and um, with that. You know, you can't. You know, there's not going to be inflation per se because you know you're you're able to. You know, you're not. You can't just print Bitcoin. Right. So I don't know what the unit is, but it's just a standard unit. Somebody at one time decided that there was going to be a million Bitcoins or whatever that number is, and that's why the price fluctuates a little bit because of it. But you can buy, like I said, or you can own a fraction of a Bitcoin, and that's how you make your purchases because you can get that down to as little as you need to. 
Exactly. And also, I should say one other thing. If you're not in the country, um, which I think some of the listeners might not be because I've uh, told some people about the show, um, you can buy Bitcoin at purse.io. And essentially what that website does is allows you to buy Bitcoin um, by leveraging Amazon wish lists. And uh, maybe on another time, I can go and tell you about that as well. Yeah, that'd be, that would be great, Michael. So we're, we're coming up against the clock here. Tell us one more time about Mason Eyewear. MasonEyewear.com essentially promotes Bitcoin. Um, it's an affordable way to buy glasses. Uh, it's completely, you know, stylish. Um, I could sit here all day and tell you, you know, what's good about it. And, and, you know, my glasses are the best. But in reality, we, you know, we, we try to do a good thing with our sales and our profits. And we also try to, um, you know, expose Bitcoin and, and hopefully, um, you know, be a part of the adoption of it globally uh, within the future. Michael, it's been great. I love your website, by the way. I'm looking at it right now. And, and if you're looking for stylish eyewear at an affordable price, go to masoneyewear.com. And if you want to try out Bitcoin, give it a try right there. Thanks, Michael. We really appreciate being, you being on the Tech Ranch. Mortgage Talk 101 on Super Talk 1270. Basically, Congress is the George Costanza <laughs> of the political world. And anything that they do, they should just, they should do like George Costanza, and they should decide to do the opposite of whatever. Because yeah, what yeah, they, they decide to create a law for too big to fail, and what do they wind up with? They create a law to prevent too big to fail, and all that's left is too big to Our fail. Our plan worked perfectly. It failed. Yeah. <laughs> Mortgage Talk 101 with Joshi and Dave Florin Friends. Thursday mornings at 11 on Super Talk 1270. This is J.R. Scott with Harriet Livestock for our sale. Friday, June 6th, big special bread cow, summer cabin, and fall cabin sale. Here's a complete dispersion of 1,050 cows. Here's 300 black Angus cows with big black baldy calves at side. Here's 50 red Angus cows with red baldy calves at side, all from 3 to 5 years old. Here's 600 fall cabin cows, start cabin August 10th. 475 black and black baldy cows bred to Roush Herford bulls. Here's 130 red Angus cows bred to Charlet. They're all 3 to 7 years old. Here's all the bulls in town. There's 25 black Angus bulls. They'll be all 3s and 4s, all semen tested, trick tested, poured in all their shots. 10 Herford bulls, all 3 year old semen tested and trick tested. All these cattle been on a complete mineral program. Here's Schumacher. 100 head of black cow calf pairs of black calves at the side, 3 to 10 years old. 45 head of black fall cabin cows. Start cabin August 1st for 60 days. Enright, 50 head of first black heifer calves, big black calves at side. Becker, 50 head of red Angus heifer for pairs with big red Angus calves inside Pudwell. 30 black and red big calves at the side. They're three years old. Fuchs, here's 40 head of fall cabin cows from three to eight years old. Complete dispersion. Start cabin August 15th. Here's another 40 head of black and black baldy cows from three to seven years old. Start cabin August 10th, plus many more by sale time. So if you're looking for some outstanding red cows, red heifers, pairs, and summer cabin cows, don't miss this sale. Friday, June 6th at Harriet Livestock, Harriet, South Dakota. For any questions, telephone 605-437-2265. Thank you and have a good day. Now at Menards, it's the perfect time to save big on all of your projects with an 11% rebate on everything in the store. Save Save 11% after rebate on all lumber, roofing, and siding. Save 11% after rebate on all decking, fencing, and landscape blocks. Save 11% on all paint and stain. Plus all grills, patio furniture, trimmers, and mowers. Good through Saturday, June 7th. So save today with an 11% rebate on everything in the store. Save big money at Menards. This is your need. It steps, turns, leaps, spins. Bends every way you want it to. Or not. Fixing that could cost you big, but not if you've got a health plan from the new health insurance marketplace. It's where you can compare plans from brand name companies side by side. And it's the place to get lower monthly payments as part of the health care law. Enroll today at healthcare.gov to take care of that knee and every other part of you. Sponsored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in cooperation with your state broadcasters association and this station. Lots of clouds this afternoon, areas of light rain, high in the mid-60s. Tonight, partly cloudy, low of 47. I have 74 on Tuesday. Lots of sunshine Tuesday night. Clear to partly cloudy, low of 52. I have 76 on Wednesday. Lots of clouds, areas of showers and storms. Wednesday night, more showers and storms. A low near 54. I have 75 Thursday chance of thunderstorms. I'm meteorologist Laura Lockwood on Super Talk 1270. Right now it's 55. You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. We're back to the Tech Ranch. Stream this program now at supertalk1270.com. Here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And we're going to switch topics now. Uh, speaking with Mike, or we were just speaking with Michael about Bitcoin, and we are moving to search in- engine optimization, or more commonly known as SEO, social influence, all kinds of great stuff. The co founder at Social Influence University. Jana Hoiberg is joining us online. Jana, how you doing? 
Very good. How are you? Hey, we're ex- excited to have you on the show today. Um, tell us a little bit about your background and all, all that good stuff. We'll start there. All right. Well, I ha- uh, ran businesses for 30 years in Boston in the high-tech industry and uh, all sorts of, um, you know, ver- mostly in the ERP financial accounting arena and uh, moved to Boston when I was 20 and said I'd never stay in Boston and fell in love with it. <laughs> and I now live in um, Colorado and I um, own my own business here. Well, that's fantastic. And, and uh, again, we're... we're uh, excited to have you on the show. Uh, we talk a lot about search engine optimization, and why don't you uh, explain to our listeners what that means? Um, search engine optimization is how to make sure people find you and find you fast. Okay, so when you do... That, 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 you know, sometimes I like to boil it down to um, um, things quickly, because uh, a lot of times you go and you put a question in, and you put a question in to to Google and ask what it's about, all about, and you want to be you want to make sure that they find out about you first. You okay. don't want to be in the 17th page because no one will find you. Right. And search engine optimization is just trying to figure out um, how to make sure that you are um, top and foremost on the first page uh, when someone's doing that search. And a lot of people might think that maybe we're trying to game Google by you know figuring out ways to get you to the top of the search engine. But but quite frankly, if you're interested in being uh, on that first page, you know, when people are looking for, for a certain item or whatever online, the odds are pretty good that the people are looking for you as well. Isn't that correct? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you can look at it as um, gaming it, or you can look at it as who, who do you think can best serve the consumer, you or your competitor? And if you think your competitor um, can, then fine, stay on page 17. Yeah. <laughs> if you think you've got a great um, service that your customers need to find out about and they just don't know about you, then it's um, part of your responsibility to your business, to yourself, and to your existing customers to make sure that people know about you so you stay in business. It's really all about marketing. And the other thing is, I think, is that, you know, when you type something into a Google search, you want relevant results. And a lot of times, if you don't optimize your site like you should, you know, people might actually be getting results that aren't aren't relative to the search that they're doing. Oh, absolutely. And so part of it is when you're doing search engine optimization, it's really making sure that they're finding you for the right thing. And the more, the broader you are on things, probably the less chance you have um, of really rising to the top. You know, most of the um, people that are, that do rise to the top, they become very focused, very vertically market focused. And there are things that they do and they do well, and that's what allows you to be the specialty. And that, once again, goes back to Marketing 101. What makes you different from your competition? So... You know, I know we talk a lot about Google. Of course, there's Yahoo and Bing and, and many, many other search engines out there. Is there a difference as far as how you would optimize, optimize your site to Google as to Bing, for example? Um, oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely different ways. But what most people do is they optimize for the main one, which is part of what um, why Yahoo doesn't always like it, is everybody's optimizing for Google and Bing and Yahoo is really a secondary, but it you know that becomes there are different ways because they ha- they have their own unique ways of looking at things, and you have to understand that, and that's why you really need um, you know an SEO organization to help you with this. It's not something that most people can do themselves. Yeah, in fact, uh, you're absolutely right about that. It's a complicated thing, and. Uh... The one thing that that can happen is if you aren't careful, you can actually get blacklisted from certain oh. web, web or some from certain search engines. Absolutely, and I've even seen that seen um, that happen with um, people within social media that they try to do everything in a day or everything in a week. I mean, even like Google reviews, you don't want um, all your customers, all your friends to go um, post you know twenty five Google reviews in a day because you would. You will, you've got a great chance of being blacklisted. You know, do three or four um, a week or two or three a week, and it builds up over time. This is not, um, the joke is often 
um, that you, you know, can't have nine women and have a baby in a month. Um, you need that process time for, to, to develop. And the same goes with, you know, at your SEO. There is not an um, overnight sensation that happens. You right. might get, you know, quick bumps on things because you start doing something. But if, again, going back to if you're on page 17, you're not going to go to page one um, overnight. It's about consistency, isn't it? Yeah, just like on all marketing. It's, a, it's part of having that consistency and branding and then also having it be something that somebody is really looking for. So let, let's change gears just a little bit. Uh, you know, you're, you're also uh, a coach, a business coach, and you talk a lot about social influence. What is social influence? Social influence is having the ability for people to be able to know who you are and to be an influencer from there. You know, it's the old um, saying, I, I guess I'm into old sayings today, but, you know, um, wh- who is it? When um, E.S. Hutton speaks, everybody li- listens. Social influence is when you do say something, people stop and go, wait a minute, what, what did she just say? What did he just say? What did this business just say? And have people want to know because you're providing value to the people that you're that are reading and uh, um, seeing your posts, whether it be blogs or uh, Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever the case may be. So because you're speaking of something relevant, that is basically how you build your audience, correct? It, it, is, the, it is the relevance and something that they're interested in. Because if, um, if it's just relevant to, but I'm not interested in it, I'm going to pass it by and not care. But if, uh, if it's relevant and something that's um, targeting what I'm interested in, then that's a whole different um, ball game. And, for example, it could be relevant because it could be about a football team. But if I don't care about football, then it's not something that's my interest. So right. it, you've got to really be um, know and target. So that goes back to knowing your audience and being an influencer within your audience as well. So how do you get to that point? Yeah, you know, it's um, the... The thing in social media, social influence, is there are no experts um, out there because it's too new. And about the time you've got an expert, somebody says they're an expert, things have changed. And, you know, so there are people who are knowledgeable, but I'm still questioning it, uh, the whole expert aspect of it, especially if you've ever read the book Outliers, you know, creates, you know, 10,000 hours for somebody to be actually be good at what they do. Okay. Um, but how do you how do you really get there? It is it's consistency, and it is understanding who you are and who your brand is, so that you you're providing that consistent brand, and it, it is being out there, and it is um, determining what your audience is. It is going and spending the time and interacting. That's the other aspect of it. Is do you interact with other people that are in your M? area. So whether it is um, LinkedIn groups or whether it's in blogs, do you read other people's blogs and do you have comments? Because it, it becomes that conversation that people want to listen to that they then want to be able to talk to you that you start growing to be an influencer. And again, it doesn't happen overnight. So Jana, you know, if you want to delve into you know, using social media as a way to maybe garner business or what have you, is there, you know, should you be good at one arena? Let's say you sh- should you be really good at Facebook first and then move on to Twitter, or should a person just kind of incorporate all of them at the same time? Well, I guess you first have to um, ask the question of where are your customers? And if you are a business-to-business type of environment, I might not um, you spend a hu- huge amount of time on Facebook. If you're a business-to-consumer type of business, then that's a very different story because your consumers are going to be on um, Facebook more. So it really is to, it's understanding B2B versus B2C is, um, are two different, very different approaches that you're going to take to this. And business to business, I might um, spend a little bit more time on your, your Twitter and your LinkedIn. The reality is that it's a life doing anything with marketing. Do you know enough to do it yourself, or do you need to hire somebody 
that is going to be able to help you lay out what is the best strategy and help you get there from there. And it also depends uh, on your business. You know, are you going to hire somebody in to do that? Then that's great. Make sure that they're probably under the age of 40. Sorry, that's you're right. That's age discrimination. <laughs> Maybe I can get away with it because I am over 40. Well, uh, and I, 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 yeah. somebody, I did it for myself, for um, my own stuff for a long time, and I actually have somebody that is helping me do it that you know does work in this um, particular area for my own realm because it, it was they know how to do it better and they can spend the time. Um, it's like for a business owner, do you go do your own taxes or do you have a CPA? The same is true with, with social media. Now, to go back to your, your, um, your original question is, do you, know, do you do it one at a time? Um, yeah, you've got to start with a foundation or whichever one, but you really need to build them all together. Okay. And you may have, a, have more of a focus in one area. Is that making sense? That makes absolute sense. Jana, we really appreciate you being on the Tech Ranch. I know we only had you scheduled for three or four minutes. I really appreciate you staying with the segment. I think you had great information. So okay. uh, we'll catch you again some other time, okay? All right. You All right. have a wonderful day. Thanks, Jenna. And after the break, everybody, Ken Sanders from the Volt Report. And we'll be talking about solar roads and I think more about the Google car. So come on back. Log on now at supertalk1270.com and join the VIP club. Get points every time you log on. Use those points to win prizes from local merchants or online like the Bose SoundLink Bluetooth speaker. Just go to the website, click the VIP tab, and join now. Log on, get points, and win prizes from the home of accurate news, stimulating talk, and the Bismarck Bobcats, Supertalk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. Every year it seems you have tough questions to ask yourself. How do I manage all the different soil conditions and topography in my fields? Is there enough nitrogen left in my corn crop to get me through the season? In a time of constant change, in Circus Services from DuPont Pioneer gives you access to real-time information and insights to make you more productive and profitable. The Incirca Yield Platform, for example, offers a number of crop production tools, including a service that specifically helps you apply nitrogen more efficiently. One of our Incirca Certified Services agents can help you customize these industry-leading tools and technologies to your fields and conditions. No matter the size of your operation, the equipment you use, or the brand of seed you plant, Incirca Services helps you make better, more timely decisions. Create your account at incirca.pioneer.com today. For more information, contact your local Incirca Certified Services agent. What makes Corwin Churchill your appliance superstore? More brands and more choices, plus factory-approved service. At Corwin Churchill, you can choose from all the leading brands like Whirlpool, LG, Samsung, Electrolux, KitchenAid, Maytag, Blomberg, Frigidaire, Amana, and more. At one store, you can select from the best-selling brands in laundry with free local delivery and installation. Looking for a new kitchen? Select from 15 different builder remodeler packages, all at special prices. Pick both the quality and price level you want from good, better, or best. Or select from exclusive premium brands like Liebherr from Germany, Bertazzoni from Italy and Capital Cooking as used on the Food Network. All major products are backed with Corwin Churchill's Service One in-house appliance repair. Before you buy anywhere, ask about service. You may be surprised. Whether it's laundry or home appliances, you'll find more brands and more choices in downtown Bismarck at your appliance superstore, Corwin Churchill Appliance. Lots of clouds this afternoon. Areas of light rain, high in the mid 60s. Tonight's partly cloudy, low of 47. I have 74 on Tuesday. Lots of sunshine Tuesday night. Clear to partly cloudy, low of 52. I have 76 on Wednesday. Lots of clouds, areas of showers and storms. Wednesday night, more showers and storms. Alone near 54. I have 75 Thursday chance of thunderstorms. I'm meteorologist Laura Lockwood on Super Talk 1270. Right now it's 55. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. Follow the guru of geek everywhere he goes. Post your comments or questions at thetechranch.com. Once again, your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And welcome back to the Tech Ranch, everybody. Mr. Ken Sanders from the Volt Report is joining us. How you doing, Ken? Oh, good. Just making some cartoons and stuff. Cartoons? You you are a 
I don't even know the what is the name of an of a person who makes cartoons. Jim, this is a trivia question for you. Animator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a is cartoon accurate. maker. There there is actually a term, isn't there, Ken? Uh, I couldn't I couldn't pull a term out of nowhere if it was an animator. Cartoonist, maybe. <laughs> Cartoonist, well, cartooner. There yeah. is there is some cartoon long term yeah, for it. So I'm gonna we're gonna we'll wait for the feedback now on Facebook. We'll see if anybody knows yeah. and we may have to look it up. But I think there's actually some long word for it. But anyway, just to show you my intellectual abilities here, which are none. Animator but, dominator. There you go. <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be Mr. Ken Sanders right there. So uh, I, I try to I try to get people to refer to me as animatron sometimes, but it usually it don't fly. Animatron. That would be your superhero name. Yeah. Well, if you're a lady, you could be the Animatrix. That would Boom. be good, actually. Yeah. Yes. Wow. You know, when I was going to animation school, there was a girl that would come in the class, like, full on, like, geared up. She would have cat ears and, like, leggings, fishnet leggings with the holsters and, like, would wear corsets sometimes. I think I married her. gnarly. <laughs> Yes, you did, Jim. Yeah, my first wife. <laughs> uh, let's not go there. Oh, <laughs> uh, too funny. So, is that was that the character that she drew then, or just, she was just into the animatrix characters? She was just she was into it. I I, I really kind of appreciated that about her, and I appreciated that about animation schools. That in those classes there were some oddballs, very interesting people. Well, I think I think in that realm you kind of have to be very interesting in order to, to work in you know in that area. So, which is why we have you on the show, by the way. So, so <laughs> <laughs> you like that nice transition there, didn't you? True to my goofy roots. So, tell us a little bit about this dog game council. That's really neat development on the intelligence of dogs. Like dogs are something that can be trained so uh, a kickstarter that just wrapped up last night actually had a device up on there that teaches dogs to recognize sequence of light patterns and that there's like a little light pad and um, the lights light up and the dog taps the right pads and when it does that it you know gives it a treat or whatever but the the highlight of the thing, I guess the seller point that they make for it is that it's something that your dog can play with while you're not at the house, and they can keep it entertained on an intellectual level while you're not around the house. So it's called a clever pet. Is it something that, I mean, did they show this device actually being used and dogs are enjoying it? Or Yeah, the, the, the dogs do pick it up. They, they get it, and... Um, you can actually kind of use your smartphone app to rearrange the puzzles and stuff or level up the puzzles so that the dogs have a more complex difficulty level. It re- this reminds me of a study that was done a few years back. Uh, I forget what major network did this, but they wanted to put more animals in some of their in some of their shows, you know, cats and dogs, because they figured that actual cats and dogs would enjoy watching them, which, of mm-hmm. course, would bring their, their owners along. So... Uh, I don't, you know, I'll have to look into this a little bit more. I'm not sure what the practical application of it is, except that it just entertains your dog, which I guess is just a high tech toy, maybe if nothing else. It is a high tech toy, and they call it the uh, the video game council for dogs. Okay. But I want to say that, um, you know, on a far out land, <laughs> speaking of like a cartoonish uh, my state of mind here. I I watched Thundercats a lot when I was little, and I always wondered to myself, if we have such a clear communication with our animals, then, you know, how long would it be until that communication is totally refined? And when you, when you take a, you know, when you have an animal in a good environment, you know, you raise, raise a dog in a junkyard, it's a junkyard dog, you raise a dog in a good home, humanized, and it has a clear understanding with humans and all that. So I wonder, like, as the years go by and these wild animals are subjected more to domestic environments and even intellectual stimulation, how many hundreds or thousands of years will it be before those animals begin to really pick up the human state of mind and, and you know, develop a, a, a rapport with humans that's not so... I 
hate to call dogs stupid, but they <laughs> they can be pretty dumb sometimes. But you know, <laughs> well, you know, it's you interesting. Know I mean? Yeah, I do actually, and and I don't think it's as far away as you think because you know e- even our devices nowadays. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's actual devices being developed that that will translate uh, what a dog is saying, and. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think too. there's even some apps and things that are that are taking that in. We'll have to make that a show sometime. We'll talk about that a little bit more. I really want to hear about these solar panels, though. The solar panel roads. The road. Yeah, that's just way too cool. That's that's going to be huge. Some people are thinking. Um, really cool story behind it too, because the inventors of it are sweethearts. Uh, they met at the age of three. And they're married now, and they're a really cool couple named uh, Julie and Scott Broussard. And, um, yeah, they together put together these really durable uh, solar cells. They really look like cells. They they have, like, these octagonal shape about the size of a stop sign. And they place these things along each other in patterns, kind of like brick layers. Yeah, so it's and, like it's like it's like an old uh, cobblestone, basically road type of deal, correct? Yeah, okay. yeah, made of solar cells. Yep. And yeah. it, it, it's a street. It collects solar energy, and they're really high tech too. Like they have light diodes in them; they can light up and form patterns that are programmed into them. So I seen this uh, um, this gentleman that was working on glass roads. Have you ever seen this before? where you know they, he was actually instead of using pavement or cement to build roads he was using glass because sand is everywhere and and easy and interesting concept mm. and somewhat viable uh but same type of thing he was putting light diodes and that type of thing and had had a dream of of putting solar panels you know as the lower bed of this glass surface and you know repairable as opposed to you know cement the work that it takes you can repair glass rather easily and all that good stuff. So um, I'm talking with my good hands idea. here, and I just banged onto the onto the spring holding the microphone. So that's what you were hearing there. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so th- this is somewhat similar to that. Is there is there like some type of layer that goes over the top of the solar panels themselves? Some type of clear polymer or something that they're putting down? Yeah, it it is actually. I believe as you were describing right there, it's a it's kind of like a, a, a super tough, like glassy polymer. They got they got kind of high tech of what they made the top out of. And I'm not exactly clear on what the consistency of it is, but it's tough. It's durable and strong, and it's translucent. It gets the job done for them. So, and 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 when we're talking about the light diodes in this, what that means, you know, for people who are driving right now, maybe listening to the show, is that. If there's a warning, let's say there's something that happens a mile up the road, an accident or something, they can actually put a warning right in the road. It'll light up and say, you know, collision ahead or, you know, uh, bad weather ahead. Um, you know, you, you can, uh, I'm looking at your diagram in here. It can be a crosswalk that's basically a lit up crosswalk. And if there's an event going on in your area, you could actually change that crosswalks to different locations. I mean, it's crazy what you could do with this. Yeah. All at the, um, you know, all at the click of a mouse on a computer, you know, they have they have the network access, uh, their little solar road grid or whatever, and yeah, they can just switch it up. They don't have to like rush a truck out there and put up signs. Right, right. So very very cool stuff, everybody. If you want to know more about the solar panel road, uh, go to thevoltreport.com. Uh, I know we're running up against the clock here. I want to hear your comments on the new Google car. Oh, uh, well. Uh, you know, it looks cool, I guess. It's cool. I think, you know, it's great that it drives well and everything. But uh, I've seen a meme online about how, uh, you know, it doesn't look anything like Knight Rider kit. Oh, right, right. I mean, I don't think I don't think people are going to expect that you go out and fight crime with the new Google car. <laughs> I, I want to hear the theme song, dun 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 as you're driving down the road, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, That's funny. It doesn't exactly fit, though, when you're riding in what the Google car actually looks like. Yeah, it kind of has a bubble shape to it. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but how do you feel about not having a steering wheel or an accelerator? Man, you seen that movie, Wally? I don't think so. It's about a little robot. That, yeah, it's cleaning the Earth because the Earth got... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that, yes. 
Yeah, I, you know, at first I was thinking to myself, like, oh, this, you know, maybe this is the beginning of the humans that don't do anything and they just hop in their driverless cars and, like, roll around. But I, I believe that yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that people will have, like, opportunities to do things more in their vehicles, like text and not get in a car accident. Right, right. Well, they're rolling out a hundred of these, and I don't know about you, Ken, but you and I should be on that list because it'd be fun to test one of these. Man, if you get a way in, hit me up. Let All me right, know. I'll do that. So, anyway, Ken, a pleasure as usual. We're having you back next week, right? Yes, sir. All right, sounds good. Everybody, have a great week. So biased and so slanted that he was just absolutely lying through his freaking teeth. I mean, it wasn't a misstatement. It wasn't a miscue. It was a straight up lie. We are constantly hearing about how North Dakota is immune to the economic turndown. That is simply not true. Shot the goal! Here, what?